Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at Coulomb's law, sign of force in Coulomb's law, permittivity of free space, and then we're going to finish with a summary. We're going to define a very important law in electrostatics, and this is called Coulomb's law. The electrostatic force between two charged spheres is given by Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law states that the electrostatic force between two spheres, Fe, which has a unit of newtons, is equal to some constant of proportionality, which we're going to call k for now, times the charge of both the spheres, so q1 on the first sphere and q2 on the second sphere, divided by r squared, which is the distance between the centre of the spheres. And this is Coulomb's law. We can illustrate it on two spheres that are charged. They will feel some force Fe between them and they will be separated by distance r. And we'll have charges q1 and q2. Now the constant of proportionality in Coulomb's law has a known value in units. And this constant of proportionality is equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newton meters per coulomb squared. We can now rewrite Coulomb's law using a physical constant called the permittivity of free space. So we're going to write out Coulomb's law exactly as we had before with the electrostatic force Fe being equal to the product of the charges on each of the spheres divided by 4 pi times the permittivity of free space epsilon naught times the distance between the spheres squared. And so here's our rewritten Coulomb's law in terms of the permittivity of free space epsilon naught. The permittivity of free space also has a known value and units and its value is epsilon naught is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton per meter squared. For example, if we have two spheres with charges of plus 10 microcoulombs and plus 5 microcoulombs at a distance of 0.5 meters from each other, we can find the electrostatic force between them. So here are our two spheres. One has a charge of 10 microcoulombs and the other has a charge of 5 microcoulombs and they are separated by a distance of 0.5 meters. And we want to find the electrostatic force between them. And because both of the charges are positive, this electrostatic force is going to be repulsive. So we can draw it onto our diagram as acting to move the spheres away from each other. Now we use Coulomb's law in order to find this electrostatic force. And all we need to do is substitute in the values that we were given. So we have the electrostatic force equal to 10 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs times 5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs divided by 4 pi times epsilon naught which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton per meter squared and we need to multiply it by 0 0.5 meters all squared. And carrying out this calculation gives a value for Fe of 1.798 newtons, which is equal to 1.8 newtons to two significant figures. Coulomb's law also gives the electrostatic force between two point charges. So here we have two point charges, which means that they exist at a certain point. And if they're both positive, charges, there's going to be an electrostatic force of repulsion repelling them away from each other. If we define the distance between these charges as being r, the electrostatic force on them is given by Coulomb's law as being q1 times q2 divided by 4 pi times epsilon naught times r squared. 
technically, Coulomb's law only takes this exact form for charges in a vacuum. So if we're in a vacuum, these spheres are going to obey Coulomb's law and experience a force Fe. However, air has very little effect on electric fields, so we're able to use Coulomb's law in this form for air as well. So the permittivity of air is very similar to the permittivity of free space, which means that the form of the force acting on these two spheres in air is going to be almost exactly the same as the force acting on the spheres in a vacuum. Now we're going to look at the sign of the force in Coulomb's law. It's always the case that light charges repel while opposite charges attract. For example, two positive charges are going to experience an electrostatic force of repulsion, and so are two negative charges. However, opposite charges are going to be attracted to each other. And this is a fact reflected in the sign of the electrostatic force found from Coulomb's law. So these two charges experience an electrostatic force Fe, and the form of which is given by Coulomb's law. If we define both of the charges as having charge Q1 and Q2, and their separation as being R, we know that the positive charge has a plus Q1, and the negative charge has a charge of minus Q2. So therefore we have plus Q1 times minus Q2 divided by 4 pi times epsilon naught times r squared, and this is Coulomb's law. A repulsive force is represented by a positive sign, and an attractive force like the one we've just seen is represented by a negative sign. So if we have a positive electrostatic force, we know that it must be acting as a repulsive force. And if we have a negative electrostatic force, it must be attractive. So now, let's look more closely at Coulomb's law. The force either between two positive charges or between two negative charges always takes a positive sign. So here we have two positive charges, plus Q1 and plus Q2. And we know that Coulomb's law is going to be equal to plus Q1 times plus Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times r squared. And because we're multiplying two positive charges together, their overall product is going to be positive. And therefore, since we have a positive times a positive, our overall force is going to be positive. And we know that this force is repulsive because it acts to separate these two positive charges. Now if we look at these two negative charges, we're going to give them a charge of minus Q1 and minus Q2. And we're going to look at the electrostatic force between them. And this is going to be equal to minus Q1 times minus Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times R squared. And now look, we're multiplying a negative charge and another negative charge. And we know that if we multiply two negative numbers together, we get a positive. And this means that our electrostatic force Fe is again going to be positive. And we know that it represents a repulsive force because it acts to separate these two alike charges. And so therefore we can see that a repulsive force is represented by a positive. In Coulomb's law, the force between two opposite charges always takes a negative sign. So now let's have a look again at our two oppositely charged particles. One is going to have a charge of plus Q1 and the other one has a charge of minus Q2. We know that the force between them is attractive and its magnitude is given by Coulomb's law. But now since we have opposite charges we can see that on the top we have a positive charge multiplied by a negative charge which will always be negative and therefore our electrostatic force is always going to be negative. And so therefore we can see that an attractive electrostatic force is going to be negative. For example, we can use Coulomb's law to find the force between the electron and proton in a hydrogen atom if we take the distance between their centres to be 5.3 times 10 to the minus 11 metres. So let's draw this on a little diagram. 
We know that the distance between them is 5.3 times 10 to the minus 11 metres. And the charge on a proton is equal to plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And the charge on the electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. We know that there is an attractive force between them because they are of opposite charges. And we want to find the magnitude of this attractive force. So we multiply the two charges, divide by 4 pi times epsilon naught times r squared. And so we find that the electrostatic force is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs divided by 4 pi times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs squared per newton per meter squared times the distance between them squared. And this is going to give us a value for the electrostatic force that is equal. So the electrostatic force is equal to minus 8.1947 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons, which is equal to minus 8.2 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons to two significant figures. And note that this negative sign here implies that the force between the proton and the electron is attractive. Now we're going to talk in a little bit more detail about the permittivity of free space. The constant epsilon naught in Coulomb's law is called the permittivity of free space. So here we have Coulomb's law, and you can see that permittivity of free space appears on the bottom of the fraction that defines the electrostatic force on two spheres. We're able to derive units for epsilon naught by rearranging Coulomb's law. So let's multiply both sides by the permittivity of free space. So we get epsilon naught times the electrostatic force is equal to the product of the charges divided by 4 pi r squared. And now we divide through by the electrostatic force so that permittivity of free space is the subject. And now let's think about the units of each of these quantities. The units of epsilon naught are equal to the units of charge, which are coulombs, times the units of charge, coulombs, divided by the units of distance squared, which are meters squared, times the units of force, which is newtons. And we can therefore write the units of permittivity of free space as coulomb squared per meter squared per newton. We often write this in terms of farads, where one farad is equivalent to one coulomb per volt. So we define the unit of the farad as being equal to a coulomb divided by a volt. And to write permittivity in terms of farads, we also need to rewrite volts as joules per coulomb. So we have volts being equal to joules per coulomb. And therefore we can write the farad, F, as being equal to coulombs divided by volts, which is equal to coulomb squared divided by joules. Then we're going to use the definition of work done as force multiplied by the distance to rewrite the joule as the newton meter. So we know that work done is equal to force times distance. So the joule is therefore equal to newtons times meters. And hence we can rewrite farads as being equal to coulomb squared divided by newton times meter which is equal to coulomb squared per newton per meter. And now we can compare this to the units of permittivity of free space to rewrite them in terms of farads. So the units of epsilon naught are equal to coulomb squared per newton per meter squared. And we can rewrite this as coulomb squared per newton per meter times meters to the minus one. And we know that this can be written in terms of farads, because one farad is equal to coulomb squared per newton per metre. And this gives us our units of permittivity of free space. So the units of epsilon naught are equal to farads per metre. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.